if I mentioned uh, Mama Dory Latner, yes. who um, I, I reached out to her sister, uh, uh, Mama Joyce, mm -hmm. uh, a couple days ago as well. Um, and unfortunately, she couldn't make it. She said she'd be watching. So hopefully she hopped back on now. So we want to make sure we do justice because we don't want no problems. You know what I'm saying? Because we no like way. to make sure that we respect respect no the family. Yeah. No. So um, for folks who are unfamiliar, tell us about that beautiful woman that comes up out of Hattiesburg, uh, Mississippi, if you don't mind. Oh, yeah. Well, that's why we're here. And listen, thank you for inviting me to, to be in conversation again. And of course, love to uh, Mama Joyce, uh, to Sister Yodit, uh, Mama Dorian's uh, daughter and her grandbaby grandson yes, and the entire family or other siblings and family there because you know one of the among the many things that she is dory latin is a genealogist so mm -hmm. uh really has done some remarkable work on her family and then through her family the history of africans not only in mississippi and north carolina and other parts of the u.s but really kind of connected the history of our people so um when joni eisenberg uh did a tribute on WPFW on Monday with Frank Smith, uh, of course, the, the founding director of the Civil War Museum here in D.C. and a, you know, Georgia born SNCC comrade of Dory Latin, a very close comrade and brother of her, uh, hers and Chuck Hicks, of course, our brother out of Louisiana, whose father was in the Deacons of Defense mm -hmm. and um, and our sister Yana, uh, I started to say Yana Von Zahn, but no, Yana Gregory. Of course, yes, Ayana yes. was on and, and we did a piece yes. and uh, Mama Joyce was supposed to come in then, but she, you know, wasn't really feeling up to it. And we understand that because in the wake of that relationship, one of the things that she used to say about her sister was that, you know, Dory was my protector. You know, when they was when they were in the schoolyard, elementary school, Dory, Dory would fight everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Joyce, I'm not I'm not trying to fight all these people with Dory. Uh, if she saw it was going to be some smoke, she wanted to smoke. So, uh, exactly. if, if, indeed. So, if, if, if you're there, um, any of the family members, of course, uh, we know Joyce Ladner probably best of the family here in D.C. because for many years, of course, she was on the faculty at Howard University. And I often ask the students who was the first woman president of Howard University. And, of course, they say very uh, quickly and confidently, it's something it's this thing about ignorance and, and arrogance is kind of good. There's never been a president of a woman president of Howard University. Said, okay, don't forget for a year and a half about Joyce Ladner was the president of Howard University. She was the interim president, but she ran the university. In fact, it was Joyce Ladner who draped Nelson Mandela with the honorary degree when he and uh, Winnie and, and, and the ANC comrades made their first tour of the United States. So, um, but Dory Ladner, as you say, Born um, in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, uh, June, June 28th, 1942, which was 364 days after her friend and comrade Kwame Ture, who was born June 29th, 1941. Um, and, you know, Mama Dory had all kinds of stories about Kwame Ture, among many others. These, these are the comrades of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Um, she grew up in Hattiesburg, she and her sister, their siblings, uh, their parents, training them and teaching them to be fearless, you know, and also to deeply value education by the time she was a teenager. And I won't go step by step through her life. I'll just kind of give some highlights and then we can kind of have a conversation about her. Um, she got involved in the freedom struggle. You know, the, the, they, we narrated often as the civil rights movement and the black power movement, but the long struggle of Africans for self-determination there in Mississippi. And, and she she um, the, it was the death of Emmett Till, the murder of Emmett Till that really fired her imagination to really get involved. Of course, she was within a year age wise of Emmett Till when he was killed. And she talks a lot about many of the women and men of Mississippi who brought her into that movement. Vernon Damer, in particular, a fearless brother who who was killed. Uh, Damer's sister was a go went to the church that the Ladners went to and kind of recruited her into the NLACP. And by the time they get to be teenagers, uh, Joyce and Dory end up at Jackson State College. And of course, Jackson State looms large in imagination. Um, I would encourage people perhaps to check out uh, our sister, uh, what's her name? Miriam Graham. 
Mary McGram has written a book on Margaret Walker Alexander. A lot of folks we know Margaret Walker Alexander from her work as a poet, as a novelist, her novel Jubilee, her most famous poem, of course, For My People. But she also founded the Center for the Study of Black Life at Jackson State. And when you read the book that uh, Mary Emma wrote on Margaret Walker, you get a sense of what Jackson State was at the time that the, and just before and during the time that the Latinists were there, they both got put out of school. However, for mm -hmm. for, for civil rights activity, Mama Dory said, you know, I just led a prayer at a meeting. Next thing you know, they putting us out of school and they ended up down the road at Tougaloo, Tougaloo College, which had and has the reputation of being a, a place where that nurtured that kind of resistance to state violence and white supremacy in the state of Mississippi and beyond. And Tougaloo looms large in our in, in the imagination of African people. And so that's where they ended up going to school, although she ended up suspending her education three times because of her movement work. Um, she eventually did graduate from Tougaloo in the 70s. And then uh, by then uh, she was getting ready to move to D.C. She came to D.C. in 1974. Actually, um, she and her partner, an Ethiopian brother, uh, they had had their daughter, uh, like I said, Yodit, who still lives here in D.C., and she enrolled at Howard University, where she got a master's in social work and spent over 30 years as a clinical social worker at an old D.C. general. So it's important that for people to kind of know that about her in her D.C. years. But I'll kind of wind up just to talk a, a little bit very broadly, and then we can get in more detail. Um, they joined with the NAACP. Um, she joined the Freedom Riders in Mississippi in the fall of 1961. This is at the kind of end of the, the the initial wave of freedom riders in 61 and from there she got involved in the struggle um she was arrested trying to integrate a Woolworth in 1962 uh she joined the congress of racial equality very good comrades with bob moses became one of the founders of the council of federated organizations COFO, in mississippi and worked very closely with just about everybody who you can think of who ends up in these history books uh, in fact she and her sister and a handful of other young people were, had dinner at the Elks Lodge there in Jackson with their friend uh, who was then the statewide director of MSCP at the time, Mega Evers, and said, we'll see you tomorrow. Mega Evers went home, of course, and was shot in the back by the bastard Bay, Byron Day, the Beckwith. So they actually had the last dinner that Mega Evers had on this side of reality. He was sitting with the Ladners, including Dory Ladner. Um, when the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee which she joined, of course, launched Freedom Summer. This was, you know, Dory was in the middle of that. In fact, she became uh, the director of the Natchez Project, uh, a sister. She was in charge of the Natchez Project, and she was the director from 64, Freedom Summer to 1966. Uh, oh, I should probably, I skipped over something that's very important. Uh, she rode that yellow school bus that people know about when we, uh, remember the story of Mrs. Hamer, Fannie Lou Hamer from Sunflower County, Mississippi. Ms. Hamer, Pap Hamer, her husband, they had been evicted from uh, their, the place they lived on the tenant farming that they were doing by the white man that owned the place because they had, you know, she had tried to register to vote. Well, she got on the bus and that yellow bus where, is in, where they ended up getting arrested. Dory Ladner just knew they was going to be brutalized, but she was fearless. And so that's when she first met Fannie Lou Hamer. And she said, I remember, you know, being there with her. She was the first one off the bus and up the steps to the courthouse and had packed a little bag because she just knew she figured, well, we're going to be arrested. So let me get my change of clothes and everything together. <laughs> this, of course, would open up the the, 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 the the public struggle of Fannie Lou Hamer that would last for the rest of her life. But what Ms. Dory would always say was, you know, as young people, we looked at her and said, you know, we didn't have a mortgage. We didn't have rent. We didn't have to worry about food and clothes. We were still, you know, in our late adolescence, early 20 uh, somethings. And to see this sister put her entire existence on the line, however you might characterize that existence, was something that not only inspired us and instructed us. And so Dory Ladner was just at just about everything you can imagine that's in the history books. The March on Washington in 63, the Poor People's Campaign. As a famous photograph, her friend Danny Lyon took of her. They were standing outside the funeral of the four young girls who, of course, were murdered in Birmingham at 16th Street Baptist Church. And you see Miss Dory holding an American flag. But next to her 
uh, is a sister who we all know, who's down there where you are, Kalanchi, uh, our Jegna, our, our dear sister at the time, known as Donna Donna Moses or Donna Richards later. And of course, we know her now as Marimba. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. With, with yes. the Student yes. Violent Coordinating Committee. And over the yes. years, you know, that's that's that, that that's my that's my that's my that's my mama. So you know, I, when we talk about those oh, years, you, it, that's all of our no question. There are stories. There is a narrative that we have to understand because this society has cut all of that off, frozen it in the '60s, made it into black and white documentaries, and they act like those people did not continue to live. Dory Ladner, Joyce Ladner, Marimba Ani, all those people, Frank Smith, all that yes. SNCC crew that came to D.C., Marion Barry and and Ivanhoe Donaldson and all, all of those uh, folk, Karen Spellman and her husband, A.B. Spellman, who are still here in the area. I joke with them all the time. I said, it seemed like all the SNCC moved to D.C. <laughs> and so Tim Jenkins and all them, and many of them are still here. And so, you know, Mama Dory, there's so many things we could say about her. Uh, but up until the time she made physical transition, and of course, now her journey begins into a powerful end sisterhood where she joins all of our warriors who now fight for us on the other side whose names we keep alive whose spirits we keep alive um of course like like i do lukeman no question like my mother uh, catherine carr and all of the ancestors that we have um mashariki Jawanza, who just made transition uh, another one of our mothers out of indianapolis who was long distance runner in the council of independent black institutions um, and so many others we can name, but I know we're talking about sisters tonight, but emphasizing sisters. So, you know, I'll stop there and then we can talk more about, we take whatever I, I want to, first of all, I mean, you know, that's why you are important because the thing is, we, we have to be able to tell the story. This is the effort that many of us are making here at Black Power Media. We want to bring the folks on and give them their flowers and let the folks know who's real and what's what. Because, I mean, it is so much just on, on, on Mami Dory, you just, as you just talked about, you mentioned Fannie Lou Hamer and, you know, folks don't know she was the one, if I'm not mistaken, who walked Fannie to register to vote. You That's understand true. what I'm saying? So, so if you're going to talk about certain things or whatever, this is the person who, who helped the history makers make history. And, right. and the beautiful thing about, one of the things I learned about organizing, oftentimes we, we go with the popular names and we go with the with, with, with those who many times are state sponsored or state approved. Yes, sir. You understand? 